Market Street Baptist Church. What a wonderful day. What a beautiful day that we have. God, God working in mysterious ways. Uh, we, are, we are happy even with the threat with all of this death and sickness around us. When we look out the windows, we see beautiful days. We are grateful to God for that. Grateful to God for each and every one of you. We are grateful Again, our video team has come out over and over again. As we bring to you, share with you, uh, the books of the Bible. And this week, we come to the lesson number 16, the book of Psalms. And everybody is excited about the book of Psalms because we quote from the book of Psalms. It has brought joy to our heart. Many Psalms, S-O-N-G, were written about the book of Psalms, P-S-A-L-M-S, many of them. Now, I, when I want to encourage somebody, I, I, I get a scripture out of Psalms. When I want to encourage myself, I get a scripture out of Psalms. When I get ready to do devotion and I have to choose a devotional scripture, I choose a scripture out of Psalms because Song we're going to learn is a book of praise, a book of worship, a book of history, a book of, 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 of teaching, a, po a poetic book. Uh, and, and it's a wonderful book. And, and as we get ready to get into this book and we can cover this lesson, let us pray, gracious Master, once again. We thank you and we bless you for your goodness, your kindness, your mercy. Master, we thank you again for Joe King asked that you protect him, cover him, bless him, uh, uplift him, uplift his spirit, and, and encourage him, Lord. And I pray the same for myself, Lord. And I pray for the members of the Lost Street Church and those who get online to hear our Bible study, Lord. And we pray, my Heavenly Father, as I've asked you many times, I've asked you over and over, let us encourage somebody, because now in days, like these, oh Lord have mercy. We certainly need words of encouragement. But Lord, we say to you uh, this evening, thank you for the opportunity to teach your word. And we thank you again for this church family, this ministry. And we thank you again, my Heavenly Father, for letting us see another day. God bless you. And we bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. The book. Book of Psalm. First, the first thing we understand that the Book of Psalm is just like any other scripture. Like what the, what the writer says, all scriptures are profitable for instruction. So is the Book of Psalm. Book of Psalm also is 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 a, a, an end product, and that is indefectible, because John ten and thirty five says Scripture cannot. Be broken. The book of Psalms, the book of Psalms, the Psalms have its original set in human experience. When you look at that and it says human experience, not only with life, but mostly with God. Remember the five poetic book or books of the exponential, which means experience. When the collection of Psalms was brought together as one, the Hebrew title for that collection of songs is Tehillim, meaning praise songs. It means praise song. The Greek translators gave it the title Psalmion, meaning uh, songs, uh, songs, S O N G S. That's a compliment, a compliment that are a compliment, a compliment of string instruments, which mean instruments came with the song. So that's what the Greek called it, and, 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 and the Hebrews called it a, 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 a group of praise, S-O-N-G-X. This was the title used in the days of Jesus. Jesus authenticated the song, which, which means he backed it up. He backed it up by saying this in, 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 in Luke, 24 and 44, saying that the Psalms is one of the books in the Old Testament that prophesied about his coming. That's how he did 
did and simply how he did it. The collection of songs was the, was, was the inspired prayer and praise book of the nation of Israel. And they still read it in that synagogue. And we as Christian people of the New Testament, Colossians 3, 16, James 5 and 13, and all of the other denominations of Christian, we use them today. We love the book of Psalms. We love it because it speaks to what all of us feels during this life. Who wrote the book? Good question. Glad you asked. This book is commonly called the book of David. When you start to read Psalms, all through Psalms, you think about David. There are some other writers. David, David uh, wrote uh, uh, a lot of Psalms. It tells you, it breaks it down there, but there are some other writers. Uh, one of them was Asaph, who was actually a choir director. He was David's choir director in Jerusalem. You can see sometimes I think David writes to him and he writes to David. Then there were the descendants of Korah. And I assume in my mind, you can do all the research, that these were singers, not just choir members, but they were song leaders, uh, the descendants of Korah. I call the son of Korah. And then there is the old sage, which was a young man. Solomon even put his two cents in there. Psalm 72 and 127. Then Ethan, Psalms 89. Then him, Psalms 88. Then even Moses himself wrote Psalms 9. And then the rest of them, they call it anonymous. But David wrote a lot of them. What is the central message? Again, glad you asked. The central message can be summed up this way. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Central message. Or, if you want to, praise through prayer. 150 songs. The structure of the book. 150 songs. It is divided into five divisions from the time of Ezra. I'm going to mention this again. People of God, when you do devotion, please do not say Psalms chapter so and so. It is not chapter. Just when you say it, it is the divisions. We got five divisions in Psalm. The Jewish word Rashashun. I'm sorry, Midrash, meaning interpretation. It was the commentary in that day. It explains the scripture. The Midrash. Or the Jewish comment on the first psalm states it this way. And Moses gave to the Israelite the five books of the law. As it is the counterpart to these, David gave the psalms which consist of five books. So it is this. It is the five books, fivefold books of the congregation to Jehovah. And the books of the law is the fivefold books of Jehovah to the congregation. Break it down to the pastor. Just, uh, just mentioned, you mentioned for a little bit. The books of the law, which Moses wrote, is five books that God gave to the Jewish people. The Psalms, the book of Psalms, the five divisions of Psalms, was, 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 was the five books that the congregation gives. Jehovah. It comes to praise part right there. Now, in the structure of the book, we shall see facts that should follow. I really like to, really like to break this graph down to you because it's so important that you understand this. Each one of them has a doxology, there is worship, there is likeness, and then there are the authors in the first column. First column, book number one, it starts, it's it got 41 songs. Book number two, it has 50, I'm sorry, 31, uh, 17 songs in book 3, 17 songs in book 4, and 44 songs in book 5. Under book 1, we, we, we have the doxology. Uh, and, and then under that, it's not what I want to cover. Here, 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 here what I want to do. Uh, uh, on book 1, uh, the, the theme is adoring. Book 2, the theme is Wonders. Book three, ceaseless. Book four, submissive. And then book five, perfect worship. Each one of them describes a worship. Adore you, Lord. I wonder is how we are. We, 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 we are grateful or, 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 or in awe of the wonders of God. Then the ceaseless worship. Then I 
submissive worship. And I wish I could cover that some more. Uh, uh, when you look at the next column, each one of them is compared to one of the books of the, the, uh, the five books of the law. The first section, book one, uh, start with Psalms one, uh, it is compared with Genesis. The second one, Exodus. The third one, uh, Leviticus. Let me go back. Under Genesis, it is Israel and man. Under Exodus book two, Israel and the deliverance. And then you get to book three, Leviticus, you talk about the sanctuary. Then book, book four, you get there, you talk about numbers, Moses, and the wilderness. And then the last book is talks about the law and the land in the book of Deuteronomy. Who are the artists? You see right there, and you can follow them. Each one of those songs, each one of those books ends with a doxology. You can see them, uh, Psalm 41, Psalm 72, Psalms 89. Each one of them has a doxology. And I hopefully you will go and read and memorize those doxology. Note the doxology. Your own Bible will probably have the, the, fit, the division separate. Look at your Bible. When you read that, you get to a certain uh, a division, it'll say book two. Get to the next division, book three. And this is what it gives you when we cover the many subjects in the book. The, ones, the first subject is instruction or didactic, which means teaching. Second one is history. The third one is praise. And then confession. And then supplication. And then thanksgiving. But the last one is Messiah. Here, here, here is, the, here is the, the shock in all of this, in all of this time. That I read and studied the book of Psalms, uh, not, I did not notice how much of it is dedicated to the Messiah. How much of it is dedicated to the prophecy of Jesus Christ. His coming while he was there and his future coming. And man, this, this just blew my mind of, 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 of how much, how it, it I'm excited about it. I really can explain it to you if I can get into the Masonic part prophecy concerning Christ. This is the major thrust of the lesson that so we will deal with this section right now. Number six, Masonic Psalms. Amen. This, this is fascinating, man. The Masonic Psalms are full of Jesus Christ. In, in his two advents, which means the time that he suffered at the first advent and the second advent when he got all of his glory. In these songs, uh, Christ is not, not, not only referred to, but he actually speaks. So we get a glimpse, a wonderful glimpse, into the inner heart in the life of Jesus Christ. This is fascinating, man. We're about to go into the mind of Jesus Christ when he was on that cross. Ain't that something? Uh, uh, in these songs, we, we find some of the Lord's prayer. Key word. We find his prayer that were pre-written, which means they were wrote before he prayed the prayer. That gives you some authenticity about the Bible. The realness of the Bible. The Bible. It also gives you, shows you how the Bible the Old and the New Testament backs one another none of uh, uh, pre written which is the basic testimony to the divine interpretation of the scripture. And it's true. Psalms 22, fascinating Psalms. Psalms 22, this is an amazing pre written and go to word again, a pre written account of how Jesus, the Lord's death on the cross, and through the human right, the pre incarnate. Amen? And mean God made it. Before God made it, pre-incarnated Christ himself actually speak as though he was already on the cross. Oh, have mercy. Ah, listen, this is a fascinating tool. Told the presentation this morning on the prayer line, God is already in your tomorrow. So you need not to be concerned about your tomorrow. Because he's already in your tomorrow. Or even he already been in your tomorrow and came back into you today. So don't be concerned about your tomorrow, for the Lord has been in your tomorrow. Amen? Matthew 27, we 
we're talking about Psalms 22 here. But listen to Matthew 27, verse 35. And they crucified him. Ah, uh, and part of his garment. Yes, they did. They cast lots uh, for, for, for his garment, for his vestures. And he said, what, what, what really got to be, after they cast lots, they sat down and they watched him. Now I was trying to use my mind that if I was there, I'd have been looking at them after they gambled for his clothes while he suffered. They sat down there and watched him. And that's what the Bible said. The scriptures gives us part of the happening surrounding the cross. That's what Psalms 22 does. Psalm 22 tells us what Jesus thought and said as he hung on the cross. The difference here, let me see something. The difference is, Matthew 27 gives us the part of the happening surrounding at, of the cross. That's what Matthew said, that, 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 because, because this was happening then. But before that, Psalms 22 got in the mind. This is, this is what blows my mind. It gets into the mind of what Jesus was thinking while he hung on the cross. Listen to this, it's a familiar word. Uh, 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 Matthew 27, 46. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? That's what Psalms 22 and 1 says. But Matthew 27, 46 says, Eli, Eli, I suspect and I, which is Harry, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? When you read Psalms 22, and compare it to Psalm Matthew 27, you would think that they were writing and were written at the same time. But you got to remember something. They were separated by hundreds of years, and that death by, by, by crucifixion wasn't even known when the psalm was written. Because the Romans did not invent crucifixion until later. So it here is the proof, another proof, of the inspiration of the scripture that, that it is fact. The Messiah, Psalms, the, uh, 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 the Messiah, see, Psalms are rich studies of the witness of Christ. Still talking about Jesus Christ. The witness to his person, the witness to the fact that he is the Son of God. Yet have I set my my, my, my king upon the holy hill of Zion. Psalm 2, 6 and 7. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. Amen. And I have begotten thee. And then he goes on with his man. That you are mindful of him. What is the son of man? That you visit him. Then you made him a little lower than the angel. Amen. Somebody. And then you did something else, Lord. You crowned him. With glory and with honor. Psalm 89. If I could read my right, I have made a covenant with my servant, my chosen one. I, I, I have sworn unto thee. Then I will establish your throne forever. And I will build upon your throne. The psalmist also witnessed to something else. It witnessed to the office of Jesus as prophet. It also witnessed as the office of a priest. It also witnessed witness to him as the king of kings. The principle of Messiah's songs, there are a number, they number all of them. Start with two, and it, it names all of them. These are the ones that you were supposed to read. It will help you to understand that in these songs, we have the birth of Jesus Christ. We have the betrayal. We have the agony. We have his death. We have his resurrection, and then we have his ascension into heaven. And then we got something else. We got his coming glory and his coming reign. All of it is pictured in these songs. These are a group of songs that we that, that got to, that, that goes together. For example, the group that you are most likely to remember is Psalms 22, Psalms 23, and Psalms 24. Psalms 22. Hallelujah. The suffering Savior, the Good Shepherd, compared to John 10 and 11, uh, 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 the past cross, Psalms 23, we all quit.
quoted uh, the living saying, the good shepherd. Amen? Hebrews 13 and 20 presents, presents, and the crook. Psalms 24, the exalted king, the chief shepherd. It comes out of Hebrews 5 and 4. So Psalms 22, the suffering savior, the living savior, the exalted king. Psalms 22, the good shepherd. Psalms 23, the great shepherd. Psalms 24, the chief shepherd. Man, reachable songs. I get ready to come to a close. You know, we come that fast, but as we get ready to come to a close, uh, 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 the imprecatory, I mispronounced that, which means the curse, the imprecatory songs. And boy, I find it strange sometimes. You know, and I gotta say this, sometimes uh, it bothers me when I'm reading the book of Psalms because I'm always looking for inspiration. I'm always looking for words of encouragement in the book of Psalms. Sometimes I find David in a conversation with the Lord. And who, what is that conversation? When I peep into that conversation, I find him talking to God about his enemies. And he's calling on God. And he's asking God, let me, let, let, let me give you word of warning on a side note. Be careful how you treat the people of God. Be careful how you misuse a man of God or even a woman of God. Because when I listen to David, the things he was asking God to do, the things that he asked God to do to his enemies. Because there are some songs which expresses anger against enemies and he would do this. And, and, and I want you to kiss this. It's an exciting thing. It's the blowout here. Here, 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 here come the end. Here, here come the finality. Uh, uh, right here in this message today. Uh, 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 you find the song, the writer expressing anger about enemies and evil doers. They, they, they look upon uh, 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 with, with a great deal of perplexity. That's, what, that's the way. Back it up. They are looked upon with a great deal of complexity. That helps me. Because that's what I am. When I read those kind of songs, those songs, I'll be perplexed and say, what is he saying? Because God, I don't want you. I don't wish to ask God upon any of my enemies. Because Lord have mercy. A man is in a lot of trouble when he is in the hand of an angry God. This can be solved when you realize, help me, Lord that are faithful Hebrew to the Lord God consider God's enemy as his own. And he would pray to God to honor his own righteousness by inflicting punishment upon those who deny the sovereignty of God. In other words, it's saying that if you want to mess with my God, you're messing with me. That's what he's saying there because the, a good Hebrew and a good Christian and a good child of God will say, if you mess with my God, you mess with me. Because simply put this way, when you mess with me, you mess with God. And if you do that, it says so. There is some punishment. This is Psalms 139. Do, do not I hate them. Verse 21, 23. That hate you, Lord. I hate them with a perfect hate. And when you go and look up that word perfect hate, hurt, I hate them. Sir, search for me, Lord. Oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And, I, and when I read that, this helped me that I don't have to hate nobody. I don't have to hate nobody because they don't like God. I just turn them over to the Lord and let the Lord deal with them. And lastly, the word of God. All the teachers in Psalms 119, the psalm is around the Word of God. This is the longest book, chapter, this is the longest, I don't want to call it a chapter, but the longest chapter in the Bible, and it reveals the heart of God. Every verse speaks to the Word of God, law, precept, statute of God. It is in this chapter that there are 22 sections in there. 
when you start to read, it's broken up in 22 sections with eight, eight, ver eight verses each. One section for each of the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Long run verse. I'll say it one more time. I'm finished. My joke is this is the death. In the breaking down of Psalm 119, 22 sections, eight verses each. Each section represents the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. And, and, and this is what I got. If you got any assignment, it's for you to memorize Psalms 119 and 11. Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against Psalms 119 and 105. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. And when I look at you, when I see you, you ought to say, Pastor, I memorize it. It says the word, your word, have I hid in my heart. I memorize it. Your word is a lamp to my feet. Don't forget, the songs are impressions, expression of human experience, written through divine expression. They will meet every need of your life. If they are read for enrichment and for meditation, and not used to hurt your life, but if they are read to enrich your life and for you to meditate on, the song was written for human from human experience, but written through divine through the divine interpretation. God bless you. Use the songs. Study the songs. Answer the questions in there. I ask you to ask you. Answer the question. Text me the answer. Nobody did. You must have, you must have, you must have didn't know the answer. But I, but I say to you, God bless you. Thank you for listening to me. And I hope that I can bless you. Bless your heart. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you once again for the splendid opportunity to praise your name in the teaching of your word. Thank you, Lord, for inspiring me today. Thank you, Lord, for healing my body. Thank you, Lord, for strengthening my mind. Thank you, Lord, for making a way out of no way. And we thank you ahead of time. Ahead of time. We praise you ahead of time for when you will bring an end to this virus. We bless you. We thank you once again. In the name of Jesus Christ, we say amen and amen. Good evening, Long Street. Be blessed.